and welcome to the first video in the Facebook Ads Masterclass. Today we're going to be setting up our Facebook Business Manager. If you don't already have a Facebook account, you'll need to create one first. Once you create your Facebook account, go to business.facebook.com. We will be creating our Business Manager and our Business Account right now. For business name, put your business name in. Uh, for me, I'm just putting Humanic Marketing. Fill in the form with your name and business email address. You don't have to use a custom email address for your business email. It could be just a Gmail or Yahoo. It's not a big deal, but it's an address that you can be reached at for business purposes. Okay, now for the last form that we need to fill out, our website. Put the website you're going to be working for or working on in the business manager. If you don't put the proper address, this can cause issues with your business manager down the line. Now, this radio button here, are we promoting our own products and services or somebody else's? We're doing our own. However, if you were creating this for someone else and you're doing it for them, you want to put that down. Um, just be as transparent as possible with Facebook. They know, just tell them the truth. It'll help a lot if you do get the dreaded ad account ban, if you put all relevant information correctly the first time around. It'll make it so that it's a little bit easier to get your account reinstated. So we're working on our own behalf, so we select the first one, hit submit. Now you're going to be sent to your Facebook Business Manager homepage. Since I already have my business manager set up, it's going to look a little bit different than yours because I have a lot of different accounts I have access to. Yours is probably gonna be empty except for the one we just created. Click on the business we just created. Once it loads, go to the top left hamburger menu and click on it. That will load another menu and all the way to the right you'll see business settings. Click on that. We need to start by adding a page for our business. Now if you don't already have a page for your business, Keep following along, we're actually going to create one inside of our business manager. Okay, in the business settings menu on the left hand side, select pages, and it'll open up another menu immediately to the right and click the blue add button. This will prompt us to do one of two things. Today we're going to create a page for our brand. Now quick note, if you already have a page, just click add and it'll send you a notification in Facebook. If you're working on behalf of another business, click request access. All right, so we're gonna create our new page. We're doing a brand page because technically that's what we have. And in the next prompt, put your brand name. For us, that's the Slouch Buster. In the drop down menu, select brand. Then the page is created for us. Nothing else we need to do on the page end. We need to make sure we have access to this page. Once we've created it, you'll see it in that left hand menu. Click on the page we just created. In the right side of the business settings page, you'll see an option to add people. We're going to add ourselves to this. Now there are many different levels of access you can give to somebody. Since this is our page in our business, we're going to give ourselves admin access. I'm not going to go over all the different levels of access you can give. For now, just give yourself admin access and we're going to move on. Click assign and you're set as the admin of the page and we're on to the next part. Now we need to add our ad account. Immediately under pages in the left hand menu, you'll see ad account. Click ad account and click the blue add button. We're going to choose the third option and create an ad account. For the name, I like to put the name of the business and then I like to put a number of the ad account. So for this one, it would be the Slouch Buster ad account one. This is gonna be incredibly useful when you're working with more businesses or you have a lot of ad accounts active. For a while, I was only doing one product per ad account. It allowed me to see the data a lot quicker and it was easier to read. So sometimes it just makes it a little bit easier to use, but at first you won't be able to do that because they do restrict how many ad accounts you can have. I need to give myself admin access for the ad account as well. So we just go ahead, we go in, click on the ad account, click add people, then make ourselves an admin. Now the last piece of the puzzle is the most important. That's creating our pixel. In the left column, click data sources and pixels. You should not have a pixel if you're starting brand new, but if you already have a pixel and you want to create a new one, just click the blue add button. We're going to name the pixel the Slouch Buster and click next. Click set up and manually set up pixel. This will give you the pixel code that you need to insert into your website. Now, if you have Shopify, we only need a small piece of code from this. However, I wanted to go over a couple of lines of this so you can understand a little bit more about what the pixel is, how it works. And what I want to talk about is the FBQ command that you're going to see towards the bottom. The FBQ command is a call to the Facebook Pixel JavaScript function. It has two arguments that it resolves per call. This means there are two inputs. 
each inside of its own single quotes, separated by a comma. The first line here, FBQ, init, and 241, etc., is telling the JavaScript to initialize the Facebook pixel data for pixel ID 241, etc. The second line of code, FBQ, track, page view, tells the Facebook pixel JavaScript to run the pixel code to track, and it gives the argument that it wants you to track it as a page view. This means that when the page loads, you initialize the pixel for your pixel ID and send a page view to Facebook so it can track it. There are going to be many different arguments you could put in the right hand side. If you start with FBQ and track, you can actually create your own custom arguments that you can then track inside of Facebook. So if you wanted to create a custom event that happens whenever someone clicks a particular button on your website, you would add the FBQ track and then you'd put whatever custom event you want it to be. So if there's a button that you want to track how many times a particular button is clicked, you'd go into the button HTML, type in on click equals, and then you would put a full quote, FBQ, and then track, and then button count can be the argument, and then you'd close it out and close the quote. And then every time that button's clicked, the Facebook pixel is fired and it tracks a button click. That's useful for a little bit more advanced, but I want you to understand what the pixel does and what that little line of code actually means to your website. On our end, that's as advanced as we can get with the pixel, but we can do a lot of things for custom event tracking that way. All right, let's load up Shopify and go to the admin panel. You go to online store and then preferences. You'll see a spot to put your Facebook pixel in, but let's find a spot to paste that code first. We, we copied everything. We didn't just copy the number. Now I want you to copy that 241 number after init and paste that into your Facebook pixel ID section and delete the rest of the code. Click save and you're all set. Your Facebook pixel is now installed on your Shopify store and everything is set up and ready to go on your ad account. Thanks for watching this video. If it helped you, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more daily advertising, marketing, Shopify, and drop shipping training. Be ready for tomorrow's video. We're going to be going over all the different ads you can run inside of your Facebook ads manager. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.